Welcome back, everybody, to the guest slot here on It Resolves. We have a very special episode for you today. It will not be gameplay. We have got a lore video about Glissa from Daniel from Slow Unpacking. I do encourage you guys, please go check out Slow Unpacking. Watch some of his videos. If you enjoy what you see, make sure you subscribe to him. He really does a great job. He's just starting out, but he's really working hard and doing a phenomenal job. Daniel, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Ak. Atang, or hello in Fraction. My name is Daniel. I come all the way from my channel Slow Unpacking, where we take a long time with unpacking a uh, few cards and we look at the uh, characters in the cards, we look at the story, the art, and the mechanics, of course, so that uh, there is a lot of content to cover for that. I want to thank It Resolves and Country Fright for inviting me here today. And today we'll be looking at a character called Glissa Sunspeaker or otherwise also the trader of Mirrodin. Uh, and we'll be looking at the character, her cards, some other cards and a lot of story uh, behind her so that you can really appreciate the cards like, for example, Triumph of the Hordes, a lot more. So let's just begin and thank you for watching. As is logical, I like to start with the namesake cards when they're available. Glissa has two cards that already shortly summarize her story. We have Glissa, Sunseeker, who has the characteristic green skin of Viridian Elves on Mirrodin. She has first strike because she's quick and strong, and she has the ability to destroy artifacts with enough mana. Deconstruct also shows us Glissa's need to destroy artifacts and free its mana to restore nature in her world. This is shown in the story as she destroys some important artifacts by using all of her power. Her flavor says, there's a secret at the heart of this world and I will unlock it. We learn from this that the Glissa we see here just started on her journey before she met her friends, but after she lost them all. In the art, we see her standing just alone in her city of metal tubes and pipes that should resemble a forest. Glissa has always been drawn to the green mana of her world that has been hidden somewhere within it, but is up to this point less present. When Glissa later becomes the traitor, she becomes a zombie and gains black mana. She is a zombie because her skin has now been combined with the metal of her plane, becoming a true Phyrexian with bronze metal. The black mana also grants her death touch. She is more vicious than ever before. Her ability lets you turn your opponent's dead creatures into fuel for your artifacts, as you can return an artifact whenever an opponent's creature dies. Note that milling does not work. From a story perspective we wonder, how does Glissa go from wanting to find the green sun to being a traitor on the side of the metal-loving Phyrexians? That's a whole story. Glissa is an elf from Mirrodin. This plane was once created by the metallic planeswalker Karn. He made the plane almost perfect and left a robot that looked the most like Karn himself as its protector. This column's name is Memnark. Memnark roamed the plane and saw imperfections. Without Garn's interference, Blink Moths would at some time emerge from the plane's core and Memnark wondered what other life he could attract. So he built a machine to draw in the mana of living creatures from other planes, bringing humans, elves, goblins, trolls and much weirder creatures to Mirrodin. This was not enough. Memnark wanted to learn more. So he sought out to do what his creator did before. Memnark wanted to planeswalk. So he took the, to him, most intriguing sun from the sky into the core of Mirrodin to start building an engine with it that could extract planeswalker sparks. The green mana from the core would then have less influence over the world, but still managed to create a chaotic section made of wires and tubes that would resemble a forest. This forest was aptly called the Tangle. Generations of elves later, Glissa's Sunseeker was born in the Tangle and would grow to be a strong protector of it against ensuing attempts from Memnarch's minions to remove the imperfections. The elves of the Tangle were led by trolls. Glissa did not trust them and never will. She was abducted by a troll leader and taken to the tallest tree of the Tangle, Tel Gilad. Glissa was intrigued by him as he had no metal on his body. 
which all other creatures would get more and more of. So she listened to his story. He told her exactly what she had been dreaming of the last few weeks. That their world was hollow and that she would go to the hollow core of their world. This leader took her away because her village would be attacked at that moment. A troll then came in to laser beam Glissa and the troll leader took the laser to his heart to protect her. Glissa still didn't trust the trolls because of this event and took the opportunity to run off. Glissa returned to her town to find it being overrun by levelers. Enraged, she engages one and gets overrun by it, losing her leg. Glissa's best friend comes to save her, meeting her for the first time now. It's Slobat, the goblin tinkerer. In Slobat's art he is saving Bosch. His flavor has Glissa saying, I used to joke that he had been exiled for being too smart. Now I know why he never laughed. Slobat has been exiled from the Goblin Lands, because he had been born when the Blue Moon was at its scenic. This gives all creatures born then unbridled intelligence, which goblins do not accept. Slobat joined the Gold of Quirk, the one without the thumbs, and continued to have no luck at all. At this point of our story, he just escaped the Leonian overlord Raksha, and knows that Raksha is the only one that can save Glissa. So, he takes her there, which takes real courage. Raksha is a righteous leader and accepts the return of his lost slave. Still, he only does this because he has been attacked by machines too. So he suggests to go to Mephidros, as there is another shared enemy there. The three move for the swamps to defeat the necromancer Geth. But first Slobat finds Bosch from his art and patches him up. The three now take Bosch with them. Glissa continues in the swamp to defeat Gev's minion Yurt. He had a very powerful pet zombie who Glissa killed. So of course Yurt broke down crying and asked Glissa to find a new zombie. Yurt then came with Glissa to kill Gev's pet vampire. Gev then let his vampire feed on Yurt who came back as a vampire himself and beheaded Gev. Gev's zombie had then told Glissa to go to the Fadalkan town of Lumengrid. The group there defeated Pontifex. He pointed them to Menark, who resided in the core and the Caldra artifacts. These artifacts would turn into an avatar. Memnark saw Glissa and her spark and noted that he might use it to become a planeswalker. He took over the avatar and defeated Glissa. The avatar would later be completed. Glissa returned to the Tangle and found that her sister had taken over the leadership of the elves. Together with the goblins and the Leonin, they tried to topple Memnark's reign. But they were defeated and Glissa was put in a time prison for five years. In these five years, Memnark took over more of the world and the resistance was almost completely defeated. Glissa went for Memnark again, just like that, and found Slowbark's torso and head strapped to a new spark harvester. He had been forced to build it with the green sun. Glissa simply pushed Memnark and herself into the core, getting in touch with Green Sun's mana and Phyrexian oil. Slowbark then got the power from Glissa's spark and Karn suddenly showed up to help. He had been kept out from the world by Memnark and admits that he was the one to send Glissa her visions. He offers to let Glissa and everyone on his own planet die if Slowbark would become a student, but Slowbark chooses to save his own world. During the fight, the green sun was freed and green mana would return to the world. Hence the name, Glissa Sunseeker. Glissa resurfaced for the second time and she and Slobat were attacked by goblins. Slobat was never seen again. Glissa went back to her old town. Here she was called the traitor already. The elves learned that they were attacked because Memnark wanted to kill Glissa. Little did the elves know how much of a threat Glissa really was. She'd been in contact with a mixture of green mana and Phyrexian sludge, making her wilder than ever and starting her process of completion. You've seen him before in the four color ascendancy deck. Foreign Klex is the praetor of the vicious swarm. The green aligned Phyrexian family and it was Foreign Klex who took in Glissa as his champion because of her strength. Glissa advocated a quick takeover of Mirrodin while the other Praetors waited. Glissa meanwhile took over the Tangle. 
Glissa says, the other praetors cower in the dark and mince words with their false king. Come, foreign clex, let us split the ribcage of this pitiable world and unleash its fearsome heart. Glissa made a system of natural selection here. She and foreign clex would not interfere with the lands too much, just when they felt like hunting a bit. Other than that, Glissa was also tasked with building the apex predators of the tangle. If other creatures could survive their attacks, they could stay alive. Glissa just removed the brains of the strongest beasts and gave them only the instinct to hunt. Glass, spikes and extra teeth they got as well. Glissa now gladly lives in Cambry Garden, formerly known as Tel Gilad. She still hates the trolls that used to live there. She is now firmly in control of their late home. Glissa seemed to have changed a lot from a green sun seeker to a praetor's helper. In fact, she was always just on the side of green mana. So in many ways she kept to at least one aspect of her character. This is why you don't have to be massively sad about your favorite characters being completed. They will still keep their main aspects. Plus, otherwise we would have never gotten this massive game finisher for our EDH decks. Yes. Your favorite card ever features Glissa the trader and shows us the beasts that she's been creating. These are the apex predators of the tangle. With that new appreciation for one of the greater cards of magic, I want to thank you for watching. Tell us about your favorite ways to kill your opponents with infect. This was Daniel from Slow Unpacking and I wish you all the strength you need today.